big part of my process is I work in 15 minute chunks. I set a timer and I write for 15 minutes. And when that timer goes off, I stop. What I do is I give myself little mini breaks and it allows me a chance to kind of refresh and regroup. And two or three minutes later, I'll just go right back into it and do another 15 minutes. The work seems much more manageable when I break it up into small little chunks. There's no way I, 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 I think I could ever write a screenplay if I, I thought I had to do it. But if you told me to write a screenplay for 15 minutes, I'll do it easily. For me, discipline comes 15 minutes at a time because I can't handle discipline beyond 15 minutes, but I can trick myself. <laughs> I That's Will Collins, a screenwriter from Donegal Island, who last year wrote his way to an Oscar nomination, one quarter of an hour burst of creativity at a time. If you saw Wolfwalkers, his gripping and beautiful story of a girl in 17th century Ireland who befriends a tribe of magical wolves, you'll know all about Will's timeless storytelling style, blending dreamlike fantasy with grounded emotion and coming of age introspection. What you might not know about him though is, Everything Will does, he approaches in 15 minute chunks, whether that's scene work, character creation, or a writing ritual he does every morning to get his creativity flowing. I, I try to, you know, plug in a 15 minute slot in the morning where I would just free write for 15 minutes and I would start a story just as a prose. The next morning I would come back and I would continue that story for 15 minutes and uh, I would do it again the third day and the fourth day and the fifth day. And by the end of the five days, I would have a little weird short story written, just all in 15 minute chunks. It would be completely weird, but it was a great creative exercise just to, I suppose, mine whatever was going on in my subconscious and let it pour out. And sometimes in those little quiet moments, some gems can be found there as well, you know? So um, yeah, the mini, the mini sprints, that's how I survive. I'm Al Horner, and coming up on How I Write, a podcast about the highs, lows, and workflows of screenwriting. Will Collins explains why his best work often comes in those bleary-eyed moments right after he's woken up, the trick he stole from Stephen King that unlocked a new way of working for him, the single post-it note that keeps him on track in his storytelling, and how a movie like Wolfwalkers is written, from outline to the finish line. Invariably, when I get to the end, I visualise myself as a marathon runner, uh, crossing that tape and the finish line and I collapse <laughs> I collapse on a, right onto the track I don't even use my hands to protect myself when I fall I'm just scraped and I'm bruised That's all to come today on How I Write presented by Arc Studio Pro the screenwriting software that lets writers stay focused on the stories they're trying to tell on the page Get your free trial today to check out its intuitive design seamless real-time collaboration features excellent outlining functions and easy to use import and export capabilities. More on those guys later, but now with no further ado. I'm Will Collins and this is how I write. I love writing animation because you can let your imagination go wild. In the case of Wolfwalkers, never in my wildest dreams did I ever imagine I'd be writing an action adventure, coming of age, gothic horror film set in 1650 Ireland and for it to be realised in such a dramatic way. Dramatic is one way of putting it. How else would you describe the way that Wolfwalkers wowed the world in 2020, becoming an against-the-odds rival to Pixar hits like Soul and Onward for Best Picture at the most recent Academy Awards? Directed by Tom Moore and Ross Stewart, the film, from Irish studio Cartoon Saloon, benefited from a magical screenplay in which, as Will explains, he was able to let his imagination flow, almost completely unrestricted. But how do you begin writing a movie like Wolfwalkers? What are the practical steps, the daily routine that Will takes when he sits down to write a script? I think the time just before you go to sleep and the time just after you wake up are these two magical twilight hours where your subconscious is completely awake and your adult uh, logical mind is kind of going to sleep. Um, that's also where the devil can do his uh, dangerous things and kind of put crazy thoughts into your heads. And but um, sometimes, if you're lucky and you're a creative person, uh, you we're well, for me. I know I'm quite often preoccupied by story problems. So what I do is before, if I'm really stuck on something, I will make sure it's the last thing I think about before I go to sleep, and I'll really concentrate on a particular, a specific story problem, and. 
I make sure when I get up in the morning, I try and focus on that problem and see what comes out. And I just let it let a certain degree of free flow happen. And usually I come up with some some interesting ideas. I, I, I'll definitely come up with a, one solution. It might not be the right solution, but there's something magical that happens at night where your brain is still kicking over and kind of trying to solve these problems that uh, that produces uh, some sort of solutions the next morning. So yeah, for me, the early hours are particularly important for me. I should mention at this point that Will is speaking from a bright pink coloured room. This, it transpires, is where the magic happens. This is his writing room, and his current setup is inspired by one of his writing heroes, Stephen King. My writing space, I took Stephen King's advice. I uh, started off with uh, an office that was in a room with an office uh, look at, overlooking a window, and I had a beautiful view out the back of this house. I'm up in Donegal, and we're looking down a gorgeous valley. and. Um, I was positioned there, and I but I realized that I spent half my time just looking out the window and just, uh, you know, just kind of going, isn't that pretty? Oh, there's a hawk up there. And I remember I read Stephen King's wonderful book on writing, and he said he had a similar problem, but he just positioned his typewriter or computer up against a wall, and he just faces a wall and his focus should be on the screen, his focus should be on the text. And now that's where I am, I'm just facing a wall. So just give me something to write with and give me headphones so I can, you know, drown out the noise and I'll write, you know, anywhere I can be. Some screenwriters' working spaces, and I'm speaking from experience here, look kind of like that meme of Charlie from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. You'll know the one I mean, even if you haven't seen the show. A guy with a frenzied look on his face stands in front of a giant wall of paper, post-it notes and connecting lines. It's a scene of total conspiratorial insanity. But that's not the case for Will, who has one single post-it note pinned up next to his computer. It's an important one. Three words that keep him anchored to a storytelling philosophy that he swears by. I have one post-it note on my wall, and it's a quote that I stole from Neil Gaiman. And it simply says, what happens next? Okay, so I know that uh, if I'm not a telling a story that creates the sense in, in an audience of, of, of wanting to know what happens next, then I'm doing something wrong. So that's kind of my goal when trying to fashion a story. I'm trying to make sure this is creating that sense of, well, what happens next to these people? Is it is am I interested enough to continue on this journey? Are they should an audience be interested enough and invested enough to want to know what happens next? That's a kind of a principle. I just keep it. It's just still sticking in front of my face right now. As a matter of fact, it's been there for a few years. But eventually, the glue will wear off. I'm sure. Um, but um, yeah, that's what I have right now. So that's where Will works. But a huge percentage of writing has nothing to do at all with being sat at your desk putting words on paper. Will insists. At the beginning of projects, he likes to get away from where he works and mingle in the real world. That's where inspiration lies and where truth lies. The way that people interact, the things they want, their fears, their desires. All that good stuff that you want to feed into your story, no matter how fantastical its plot or setting. When I'm looking for new ideas for, for projects, I've, I used to look in the wrong places. And the wrong places are... Uh, what's happening in the marketplace, what's popular, what's happening, what are people interested, what are producers looking for. And that will lead you nowhere. And that uh, certainly led me nowhere for a while. I've since learned that the the place where original ideas are, are born is in the real world. It's, it's around you. It's always in some place that's not a film or not a book you've read. It's it's a it's a, an idea or it's a, it's something that's happened in your neighborhood. It's something that someone said someplace or maybe it's something you've seen in a documentary or but basically something that captures my interest. And usually I'll try and catalog these. I'll try and journal these. I'll try and put them down. And sometimes some of these ideas just stick and they kind of get under my skin. And if it gets under my skin, and also trigger some sort of emotion in me, whether it be 
fear or anger or intrigue or or whatever, uh, some sort of strong emotion, then I know there's a germ of something is there. It's not an it's not an idea yet, but it's it's the germ of something that could become a story idea. Next up in Will's process, he has to figure out if that germ of an idea is rich enough to sustain an entire screenplay. So how I stress test ideas to see if they're rich enough to become a screenplay is I try and frame these stories in a way uh, from the point of view of a character. If the story I'm trying to tell has a character at the, at the center of it who is going through a pivotal mo- moment in their life, like for instance, there's we all live long lives and as we see our own lives, we, 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 it feels like we're on a train track most of the time. But when you're kind of further down the train track, sometimes you can re- reflect back and realize that there were there are these certain junctions. There's some certain junctions we came across, and those are the moments that are filmic. Those are the moments. Those are the moments in people's lives that are filmic, and we all have them. They're all pivotal moments. So I look for that. I look to see if this is a if this is a turning point. If this story that I'm trying to come up with is a turning point in this character's life. If there's a before. And if there's an after, you know, if there's a them before and a different them after the events of the story, that's one thing I look for. Coming up, why Will always looks for what he refers to as the painful truth of his characters and why he likes to write an outline, then veer completely off course according to what his characters tell him on the page. But first, a word about Arc Studio Pro. Screenwriting to me is all about immersion. I want to stay immersed in that dreamy fantasy state while I weave my story and craft my characters. I don't want to be distracted by anything, and I certainly don't want to be thinking about text formatting. Arc Studio Pro understands that. It's so intuitive, it has a minimal and dare I say beautiful interface that allows me to stay completely focused on the story I'm trying to tell. If you like to work with a writing partner, well, good news. Arc Studio Pro has seamless real-time collaboration kind of similar to Google Docs, which allows you and whoever you're working with to stay literally and figuratively on the same page. Importing and exporting other formats like PDF and final draft files is easy. And best of all, it has an always free plan, meaning you can sign up today and start writing. To take your screenwriting to the next level, visit arcstudiopro.com. Click the link in today's show notes to find out more. Okay, let's get back to the conversation. The most important thing I think when when I dive into a story is if there is what I call a, a painful truth, something that exists in the character that they don't even know exists or are afraid to face. And, and the entire journey is about them uh, opening up that ch- chest of pain, really. It's in there I know that there's an emotional uh, epicenter that can really permeate through an entire story or a a cinematic story. Think of your favourite movie and the likelihood is its central character is wrestling with what Will describes as a painful truth. This is something at the heart of the character that's resolved by the end of the movie, an impossible internal dilemma that's mirrored by the external adventure that they're forced on. Working out his character's painful truths is key to unlocking the rest of his story. A really good one is in E.T. Underpinning E.T. and the subtext of E.T. is it's very much a, a family drama about a child who's coming to terms with the, the loss, the divorce of his parents. And in my eyes, Elliot is a character that hasn't gotten over the fact that his father is has left the family home. E.T. says to Elliot effectively at the end of the movie, I love you. I have to go. And Elliot has to learn that he has to let E.T. go, but that that doesn't mean that E.T. also his dad doesn't love him. And there's a a painful truth that Elliot learns in that film that he's holding on to E.T. I think the emotion is very real and it's very true. And uh, and that's why one of the one of the reasons why I feel E.T. is and always will be a classic character. a tearjerker for me. Once that painful truth has been identified, next in Will's process is outlining. For me, outline is is vital to the process. Now, I don't overly outline. 
I try and make sure I know uh, where the film is going, where each sequence will go. I, I try and keep as much detail out of the outlines as possible. So I track all of the, say, the emotional journey and I track the the plot beats in an outline. Um, but if I over outline, like go into treatment mode, sometimes you can kind of, or I can, certainly I feel like I've, I'm have i partially writing the actual film before I'm writing the film. And it kind of takes, it takes away from that excitement and adventure of the process of writing a screenplay. So my outlines are crucial and I will spend, actually, I will probably spend more time working on an outline than I will writing the screenplay. And this is just a, you know, this is just trying to figure the thing out. And, and once I actually have a locked in outline, I can write my screenplay really relatively fast. But um, yeah, the outline for me is crucial, but not in, not a, I don't want to, I, I don't like big chunky, like 30 page scriptments that James Cameron writes. I couldn't possibly do that or a hundred page scriptments, whatever he did for aliens. And, um, but yeah, so outlines like a, a good sub 10 page outline is, is great for me. After this, it's time for Will to dive into some scene work. He has his outline to guide him, but it's not something he clings to religiously. When I'm writing an actual screenplay, I'm always looking forward to what the characters are going to do when I'm in the scene. Because it's all well and good planning your mission in an outline, but it's not actually going and doing it, and it's not actually living the film in your head, uh, you, you know, like you are when you're writing a screenplay. And when I'm in a scene and when I'm in a flow of a scene, characters will often, you know, reveal themselves in unusual ways or surprise you and kind of say, in actual fact, I'm more interested in that. And I, I suppose really it's because I'm, I'm visualizing the film in real time eh, when I'm writing a scene. And I'm also aware of maybe where a scene might be lacking or where, uh, how in, in ways I can make a screen scene stronger as I'm writing it. I might get a, a new idea of like, hang on a second, you know, we shouldn't be here. In actual fact, this character is, the wrong character is leading the scene. So I need to totally reinvent this scene and have that character leading it. But if my outline is strong enough, and if I know where I'm going on the overall journey of the story, then you know, it, uh, there should be wiggle room and there should be that room for, uh, you know, uh, adaptation and invention. It has to be there. Will may have written an Oscar nominated movie, but he still experiences the same emotions that we all encounter when we sit down to write. Excitement, fear, trepidation, slight nausea. It's all part of the process, says Will. The emotional arc for me writing a screenplay and nearly all of my screenplays is that the first first page is 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 nervous i am nervous and excited and i'm i feel like i am a imposter and and that i shouldn't be writing and should never have written any screenplays in my life but once i get past the first page i the the the, the creative flow starts to kick in and i'm i'm with it and the first act is always great. The first act is always this joyride of like, you're, I'm meeting these characters the first time. I'm I'm playful. I'm enjoying the new space. I'm imagining all, all of this. But usually when I get to around after the mid act, after like, you know, the, the, the mid act climax uh, in the latter part of this of the second act, that's when there's this doldrum. And that's where this moment of, oh God, this weight kind of um, drags me down and I'm going, I'll never finish this. I'll never finish this. And also, but that's also why I lean on my process of writing in 15 minutes at a, uh, 15 minutes at a time. Because if I don't lean on that, then maybe I would become, I would succumb to that sense of doldrums. And by just focusing on writing for 15 minutes at a time, it pushes me one page forward at a time. Did you hear that? It all comes back to that key part of Will's process, breaking down the overwhelming task in front of you by approaching everything in 15 minute chunks. Quarter of an hour bursts of creativity. That is how Will Collins writes. But one final question, and it's a doozy. Why does he write? What is that impulse that makes Will and all writers 
put themselves through the emotional ringer every time they set out on a new story. Why do I write? Oh lord, I ask myself that question almost every day. Why do I write? I think I write because it's an impulse. But it's in my blood. I think that's the reason. I love cinema. I adore cinema. And I knew from a young age that cinema was what I wanted to do, but I didn't know what that was or what component of cinema I wanted to do. But from an even younger age, from when I was about four or five, I was trying to put words on the page. I was desperate. I had an impulse to put words on the page. And I found uh, that it was the, the thing that gave me the greatest creative satisfaction. When I am writing, when I have a pen and a piece of paper, or I'm, uh, it's usually a pen and a piece of paper is the most satisfying, but when I'm at a keyboard and putting words on the page, there is, it, it, it's, it's inherent to me. I can't describe it. It's like an impulse and it's like an affliction at times. But when I write, I always feel better. It elevates my spirit. It makes me happy. And I have just been blessed that I have a passion and a love for cinema and I can point my, I can merge my impulse to write and my love for cinema and they have converged into what I do know, which is a screenwriter. Will Collins there is the Oscar nominated screenwriter behind Wolfwalkers. His other credits include Song of the Sea, My Brothers, and a Netflix festive special called Angela's Christmas. He also hosts the excellent Best Bits podcast with fellow screenwriter Kevin Lehane, which I thoroughly recommend. You've been listening to How I Write, hosted by me, Al Horner, with production by Camille Demeck. Music comes courtesy of Oliver Knowles. Our theme song is by Nefetz. How I Write is brought to you by Arc Studio Pro. Get your free trial today by visiting arcstudiopro.com. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.